Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in Mark chapter 1. We're still in verses 12 and 13, dealing with the temptation of Jesus. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we said last lesson, dealing with the temptation of Jesus, the first one, turning the bread, turning the rocks into bread so that he could feed himself, dealing with the temptation for Jesus to exercise his deity and use, use his deity independent of God's will for his life, right? Turn these stones into bread and feed yourself because your body is hungry. And Job says, in Job 23, verse 12, he says, what? I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary bread. And he means here that uh, this the Hebrew for necessary bread doesn't only mean bread as in food, but also it means that the Hebrew word means statute or custom or law or decree or uh, your appointed portion in this life. So when he says here, I've esteemed the words of God's mouth, I've esteemed the Bible more than my necessary bread, means that more than the, the things necessary in this life, than my job, than, than my family life, than anything in this, in this life that I have. So we are to esteem God's word as the absolute priority in our life above our will. All right, so now we get into the second temptation that uh, Jesus experienced. And we see this in Matthew 4, verses 5 through 7. So let's read it. And it says, And the devil takes Jesus up into a holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of, a temp of the temple and says unto him, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written... Uh, he, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in his hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, in the first temptation, Jesus had shown absolute faith and trust and dependence upon God. Now, in this second temptation, Jesus Jesus said that Jesus said that he had faith in God. Now we want to see that faith in God. We want to see if you really do, Jesus, have faith in God, in your dependence upon God. But if a person has complete and total a trust in another person, then no test really is necessary. Satan quotes Psalm 91 verses 11 and 12 in order to tempt Jesus to put God to this test. So he's tempting Jesus to test God. Jesus' response was quoting Deuteronomy 6 verse 16. Do not test the Lord your God. Jesus again submitted himself to the authority of God's word, accepting God's word as God's will and not submitting to Satan's temptations. So again, Jesus is tempted the second time. Where does he go? He goes to God's word. Why? Because God's word is God's will. Jesus' refusal to test God wasn't because he was afraid that God couldn't protect him, but just the opposite. His trust was so secure in God that there was no need to put God to the test. Jesus, listen, Jesus believed God because of his word. 
He believed God because of his word, not because of any outside evidence of God's faithfulness. Jesus didn't, t uh, Jesus didn't need to see anything to, to tell him that he could have faith in God or that he could trust God. His word, Jesus went to God's word and believed his word. If God says it, that he is faithful, then God is faithful. I don't need outside evidence. I don't need to see with my eyes that God is faithful. I see it here in his word. To put God to any kind of a test reveals a lack of confidence in God. When we put God to any kind of test, it reveals that we are not quite sure about God. Some Christians may say, I know what God's word says, but I want to actually see it or to feel it, right? Or they'll say, I know God says that I'm forgiven, but I don't feel forgiven, right? I don't feel forgiven. Therefore, because I don't feel forgiven, I guess I'm not forgiven. And we go to 1 John 1, 9. What if we confess our sins? He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, but Pastor Mark, I did something two days ago and I'm still feeling terribly guilty right now. Two days later, I'm still feeling guilt, tremendous guilt. Therefore, because I don't feel forgiven, I guess I'm not. I'm not sure that I can trust his word. I know I know. He, God says if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me, but I don't feel forgiven. I don't trust his word. 